Hello ITS students. Welcome to the um, final term this year where we'll be looking at um, computer hardware. Um, there will be an exam at the end of this um, unit which will should well I'll be in an exam block or um, I will give you the time when the exam will be later. Okay so Computer hardware, while these are, are some of the things we would normally associate when you hear the words computer, in reality they are only a subset of a whole range of devices which contain a computer of some type. Computers are devices that receive information, process and store it, and output the information in the same or a completely different form. So computers can also be found in these common items, the fridge, a dishwasher, there's a washing machine, a microwave, DVD player, a television, many different devices around the home, common devices can have computers in them. And in car, modern cars there are um, multiple computers, computers that control the engine, the gearbox, the brakes, the steering, the entertainment system, GPS, airbags, air conditioning, a whole raft of things in um, modern vehicles are controlled by computers. But all computers have the following basic structure. They have an, some sort of an input, oops, a um, central processing unit which, do, which um, processes the information and transforms it in some way, some sort of output. And below the central processing unit there is random access memory, RAM, which is a volatile form of storage. As soon as you turn the device off, the RAM goes and then you have to reload it again. And there is also long-term storage. Storage which, um, when you disconnect the power, doesn't lose the information straight away. Long-term um, storage is um, technically should last forever, but all storage systems have some sort of a lifespan to them. Okay, input devices. Any device which sends data to a computer but does not store the data is an input device. Input devices. Um, on personal computers include keyboards, mice, webcams, trackpads, trackpads, scanners, touch component of touch screens, microphones. On other computers they may include some sort of a human interface. So for example a dial in a washing machine or the accelerator pedal in a car. Sensors also um, are input devices and um, they are used on machines for some sort of a control. So an oxygen sensor in a car, car engine is an example of an input device. So, Output devices. Any device which receives data from a computer but does not store it digitally for anything more than a short period of time while an output is produced is classed as an output device. So output devices on PCs could include monitors, printers, speakers. Computers use control devices that, ha that have outputs that perform the control. For example, throttle in a car um, using drive-by-wire where the throttle is controlled by the computer. A gear selector in an automatic transmission would be um, an, an output where the, um, the, gear, the gear selector being the, the um, changer within the gearbox itself is the output from the computer system. And an airbag actuator in a car's airbag. That's the thing which deploys the airbag. That's an, classified as an output device. These computers may also have some form of output for humans. For example, fuel economy readings in a modern car um, are an output device of the, um, of the computer which is controlling the car engine. So memory. All computers have some form of volatile short-term storage. Any individual item in memory can be selected by the processor at any point in time. For this reason it's called random access memory. This memory must be frequently refreshed for the contents to remain. The memory loses content as soon as it loses power, hence the term volatile. The unit for, for, of memory is sorry, the unit for memory is bytes. They are, they are currently sold in gigabyte quantities where one gigabyte equals 1024 bytes. 1024 megabytes. We will learn about, about more about memory later in this unit. Long-term storage is medium that does not lose information when the power is removed. 
This form of storage is accessed in either large blocks or sequentially, where all the data from the storage medium has to be read in in order to retrieve the required data. The units of storage is bytes and is currently sold in gigabyte and terabyte quantities, where 1 terabyte equals 1024 gigabytes. Common forms of storage include hard disks, floppy disks, optical disks, which are CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, magnetic tapes, flash RAM, so things like USB sticks, solid state drives, um, compact flash cards that are in a camera, and ROMs, which are read-only memory. The central processing unit performs two functions in a computer. It controls all functions of the computer, processes input data to create an output. Note that the input data may have been stored for a considerable period of time before being processed to create the output. There are three types of personal of processes currently in common use in personal computers. I am using the term PC to refer to servers, desktop computers, laptops, tablets and smartphones and iPod touches as the lines of differentiation are very blurred. The first type are those that contain very large instruction sets and contain separate input, output and memory access buses. There are three manufacturers of these CPUs, Intel, AMD and Nvidia. They are found in servers, desktops, laptops and tablets. The second price of type processor has an instruction set that is far more limited in scope and are called ARM processors. This enables the CPU to be much smaller and execute simple instructions more quickly. However, complex instructions take much longer as they have to be produced by executing multiple instructions sequentially. These processors also have the input and output buses combined with a memory bus to reduce the size of the processor package. There are many manufacturers of these CPUs and include Qualcomm, AMD, Texas Instruments, TMC, Samsung, LG, Hitachi, Toshiba. These CPUs are found in tablets, smartphones, iPods, TVs, DVDs, car computers, etc. The third type of processor is a hybrid of these two types. It has a complex instruction set of the first type but combines the memory bus with the input and output bus of the second type. It is manufactured by Intel and goes under the trade name of Atom. Now let's look at the, two, the components of a typical desktop computer. The large screen is what we call the monitor. Down the bottom you've got a keyboard and a mouse, which you all know. And the third box up there, the black box, is called the case. Many people refer to it by different names, but the case is a technically correct name, term for the black box. So that is a term we will be using throughout this course, and it's a term I would prefer to you to use rather than anything else you might have heard of in the past. So inside of the case of a typical computer, Inside we have um, up the top we've got the um, optical drive, we have the power supply, we have a motherboard, we've got a CPU fan in here, there is a heat sink below the CPU fan and the CPU is below that, we have the random access memory slots here and we have a hard disk drive standing up in the corner here. So all these components are the basic components of most um, computers. So like most cheap, cheaper desktop computers, the graphics processor in this computer is either built in, onto the motherboard or part of the CPU package. Most all the modern processors have a, an onboard CPU chip these days, but there are also you will find others which have a um, that have the graphics card built onto the motherboard. Okay, so in this activity I would like you to go to www.computeralliance.com.au and navigate to the components section. So it should look something like this and hover over each link on the left hand side, so each of these links here and categorize each of the subtypes into one of the following categories either CPUs, volatile memory, 
long-term storage input output connections support hardware miscellaneous and software see if you how you how you go about categorizing each of those major components to get a feeling for all the different types of elements that can go into a modern desktop computer